Tab guy here. This is the introduction video to my image dissector camera project. An image dissector is a television camera pickup tube. It was designed by Philo Farnsworth in the 1920s. The tube that I have obtained is a modern version of the tube modern in the sense that this tube dates to around 1969 and that it is designed to fit in the format of a one inch Viticon tube. So what we're looking at here is the image dissector tube, the magnetic focus and deflection coils, a standard zoom lens, a lens mount, the high voltage power supply for the image dissector tube and the adjusting controls that are part of it. An image dissector tube for all practical purposes is identical to a common photo multiplier tube in the sense that it has a photocathode whose function is to turn photons of light into electrons it has a drift region with a metallic coating that's charged up more positive than the photocathode in a way to direct those electrons, the photoelectrons, into an aperture at this boundary right here, this wall. There's an opening into a series of electrodes, which in this case are arranged in a circle so that the electrons that enter strike a series of plates and each time an electron strikes the plate two or more electrons are emitted and this goes on in a cascade so that a single electron in can produce thousands of electrons at the output it's a very sensitive light detecting tube this tube in this form can detect light it cannot form images but by modifying this section slightly it can be turned into an imaging tube this is an actual image dissector tube of the Farnsworth variety first it has a photo cathode where an image would be focused you notice immediately behind it is a series of rings and then a cylinder a long cylinder these are accelerator rings the cathode is extremely negative about a thousand volts two thousand volts negative this next ring might be minus 2900 volts so it's 100 volts more positive than this end so any electron emitted will immediately begin to accelerate the next ring will be more positive than the previous and so on then the cylinder which is called the drift region accelerates the electrons to the back wall where once again there's an aperture and the multiplying dynodes which are hard to see in this tube but again you get the ricochet effect of electrons one cascade after another amplifying in operation this tube sits inside of a deflection and focus coil just like the Viticon the deflection coils are right up against the glass two coils for vertical scanning two coils for horizontal and then a coil that's wound this way around the tube in a solenoid fashion which produces a collimating magnetic field which makes the electron image formed on the back of the photocathode travel straight to the back of the tube and form an electron image on the back wall the deflecting coils move that entire image back and forth over a little pinhole called the aperture so that at any moment we're looking at one point in the image and passing that through to the amplifying section it's an extremely simple tube it's high reliability because it does not contain a heater like most vacuum tubes this is what I discovered about this tube by eye it was possible to identify the internal electrodes and map them to their corresponding pins this diagram illustrates the functional relationships of the electrodes as well. 
the photocathode in my camera can be varied between minus 1500 and minus 1000 volts. Two more pots are connected to the first dynode and the last dynode respectively. Each dynode is progressively more positive by approximately 100 volts than the previous one. The output signal is developed across the 100K load resistor at ground potential or zero volts. This makes connecting this high voltage vacuum tube to the low voltage input of the video amplifier easy. Here we see the image dissector tube and high voltage power supply being tested on the bench. This was the uh, day that I was testing for the ability to detect light by shining a flashlight on the tube. The output would reliably go from zero to minus two and a half volts with light. Along with that two and a half volts, there was approximately a quarter of a volt of noise riding on it. This is not acceptable. If you'll note the open air wiring, uh, this baby is picking up AM radio stations and all other kinds of interference in the immediate area. So something had to be done. It has to move to a metal box. In part two, we'll concentrate on moving the camera tube and deflection yoke into a nice new shielded enclosure that will act as a Faraday shield blocking the noise.